Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one we are having the annual look at what the meta is like in the new season, in this case season 12, and the eternal question is to gank or to farm. Now obviously last year for season 11 we kind of had this thing, well there's a lot of experience, 2 minute spawn time is juicy crabs, the answer was pretty obvious, we need to make sure we're farming but don't forget to throw in that gank when you're 6 and when your camps have any sort of downtime. A core cool ganking meta though was long since dead. However, in Season 12, things have shaken up a bit and the question can be significantly more complicated depending on your first clears, depending on your champions, but I'm here to challenge all your preconceptions about what certain champions can do and give you a huge amount of information and context about the best way to play the game in its current iteration using a core challenger gameplay example. And if you want me coaching over your shoulder, don't forget I have an updated volleyball guide for Season 12 if you are looking to basically answer that question with that particular champion. And don't forget to please consider liking and of course subscribing if you enjoy the content and head to the gameplay channel as well as the Patreon for full champion breakdowns and of course coaching. And now without further hesitation, let's begin. And honestly, I was going to have a bit of a introductory phase to this talking about ganking and farming and so on. But as you can see, we're jumping straight into the game. Ruins will be on your screen in a second or right now, depends where editing happens. But I think the best way to sort of go about this is just to take this gameplay, tell you about the pros and cons of each decision and the implications it can have in terms of whether you're a ganker or a farmer. And if you're looking for more of that in-depth touch in terms of a full gameplay, 30 minute extravaganza analysis video, I will link you the direct gameplays I've done already. So now the Z is going to stop top side and the cane is going to start bottom side and you will see i wish to challenge your preconception of a ganking and farming junglers guess what you can gank with any jungler and you can farm with any jungler that has that in their kit or right artificially buff their numbers hello zed hello kiana hello talent and so on but you also would have seen a great example in the intro of what a great ganking junglers and what a great farming junglers however don't let that stop you from playing the game the way it's meant to be played and the cane will show you exactly what i mean while the zed will basically just keep farming until well i guess interstellar's timeline red crux raptors the goal is obviously still to look for a potential five or six camp Zed will do the exact same thing and now your more prototypical ganking junglers think your Warwicks, your Rek'Sai, your releases, you're looking at doing those sort of 3 camp, 4 camp variants, maybe even a level 2 gank after a red buff. The goal to gank and get your orbs with Kane is something that's quite logical, which means when you see someone low in the mid lane, don't keep on doing your full clear, immediately cut reactively path, we talked about that in last week's video, it's so important in season 12. And here is where things get very interesting to sort of show you the direction the meta is going. Fighting and farming and ganking and farming and all these things at once, these will be the best junglers. But you'll notice from the win rates that the best performing junglers are the ones that typically would like to do a bit of fisting, a little bit of fighting, a little bit of PvP gaming. And the reason is as follows. Now, not only do you impact to win mid lane, give yourself some juicy orbs, you get a lot of gold. You see Zed is going to do his full clay, look for the bottom crab, look for a gank if nothing reset. But now that early level crab really doesn't force you to need to get two of them. So what Kane does, instead of, you know, going back to his blue side, he went to the top side, he kills the top laner. And now again, you're thinking, right, now he has to go to his blue side because the Zed's going to reset and keep on sequencing. He's going to get a huge experience lead. And if it was a farming meta, that would be the case. However, he knows that even in this elo, top laners are basically suckers for their minions. Wait for the TB, wait for them to walk up, doesn't matter, you're Kane. Doesn't matter what jungler you are, you can do exactly what he's doing. Exert some patience, regank the top lane, and now we can do our blue side. And because of the diminished experience on the Scuttle Crab, he can do that, go back to base, and he will get level 5 before the Zed who gets level 5 on his Raptor Camp. Now out of base we can see, and we know that the Zed is going to obviously be sequencing down. The Kane should have been able to track this at that point, it's kind of a logical deduction given the Zed did not show and we knew he started top side. We see the bottom lane, we see they're lower in HP, some sums are burned, there's really no reason to go straight to the Crux, historically, especially in the last two seasons, Farming was so powerful that you would have to do those Krugs and Raptors. It would not be worth coin flipping and ganking the situation while the Zed continually absorbs higher experience camps. So Kane, whose scythe is now meant for ganking and not farming, decides to go to the bottom side. We do know the Zed is in the area, which means if it doesn't work out and things don't go well, the Zed can easily float on down and get a double kill counter gank, which would justify the farming cadence. The thing is, because the Kane already impacted mid lane and top lane heavily, he can afford basically to battle this out because he isn't behind on gold, he's ahead. That doesn't mean because he could, he should. You see the Master of Shadows, you see the big old Orn support floating on down, you know your thrust is ganking top lane again just to make the Nocturne miserable. Simply detach and float on away. Go to your Krugs, that'll be the second spawn off them, you did smite that, that's unfortunate, but we can secure those. And that's the downside of this kind of idea behind ganking a lot, because if they don't work out, now you don't have prior to go for the first RNG crab, which gives the normal boosted experience, which gives Zed a little bit of an advantage. However, as with Season 10, as with Season 11, we know the enemy jungler who is a faster farmer and a pretty good duelist 
We'll simply try and take our Raptor Camp, the most high traffic zone in the jungle. Made a video about that as well in the summer. So why even bother with that? You know the bottom lane shoving this. You know the bottom lane is going to get a whole bunch of tower plates, but you know that they're low and you trust in your ability to absorb orbs. And if you die, it won't matter because you've got your Kane Thanos memes fully prepared to make sure you can tell everyone that it was worth it. In the meantime, Zed is going on the Raptors. You know the Nocturne has floated mid lane. He's going to ult it. As we can observe from the chaos on screen, the Kane is able to get himself a lot of orbs, a well-deserved and well-earned double kill on the bottom lane and the Zed is able to pick himself up to assist. Now at this point in the last season, we'd be worried about the fact that yes, we've had a lot more lane impact, but the biggest concern would be that the Zed now would have tier three camps spawning across the entire map. If he secures all of those, that's a lot of experience that we won't be getting because we haven't even done a full second sequence of our camps, which means you are significantly behind in that regard. And again, if it was a farming meta, that would be basically do or die. And here's where ganking presence while floating in those camps and understanding objective control, and of course, understanding how to feed laners can give you an edge in the mind games. So obviously you fall back to your red and then reset. This will give us Gore Drinker because we are going to go Rust in this game, three melees, and the fact that Cassiopeia is just irritating and tilting, so might as well out sustain her. The Zed, however, didn't really account for the fact that the Kane spent so much time ganking earlier that the blue buff simply hadn't spawned yet. He just thought it was already up. It was not. So instead of carrying on with his sequencing and scaling up a little bit, he felt pressure to make an invade to make an aggressive play because of the lane presence and how fed Kane looks to be. So what does Kane do in this situation? What would you like to do in a farming meta? Well, my camps are up, I secure those. Now I maybe look to dive top lane, maybe I look to dive mid lane. But in a ganking meta where fighting is rewarding and farming is not, as you know, the Zed is gonna do his red, do his raptors, and at this point, no point doing Krug, so he's gonna sequence to the bottom side of the map. You can take the Rift Herald. Now, usually after this, what might you think of doing? Does top lane look diveable? Maybe we can gank it and simply use a the Herald there for some tower platings. Do you then go back to your blue side, reward yourself with plates, and then reassess? Or do you simply take it to the mid lane and try and plow down the full mid lane tower? Yeah, so the last option seems to be the best here because we can see the Zed on the control ward showing bottom lane again. He's realized that the first full sequences were great, but now he really needs to start getting on the map. He's gonna get a double kill bottom lane. The Kane now feels pressure to match that, goes mid lane, pushes the wave, singes there as well, which is why we couldn't go top lane. And he uses it for direct golden fusion. And you couldn't really fall back to reward yourself with camps here because it's an active moment on the map. By that I mean, if the enemy jungler is actively doing something to shut down lanes and get an advantage, if you're simply going back to your own camps, you're not really doing anything to offset that. And the cane decides to do so. However, as your two glorious eyeballs might be able to observe, the Zed has rotated back to mid lane. So as a Cassiopeia, the cane is going to die. They get the gold plate infusion, but they have now given shutdowns. And all of a sudden, Zed's KDA, while not beautiful, is still good. He's probably ranting on Twitter about the KSs his team is taking from him. At least that's what we can assume because high idol players are one, great at League of Legends, two, great at bitching about nonsense on Twitter. And now as Kane respawns, you would have seen the Zed get the RNG crab on the top side. He is well and truly a level ahead of the Kane, and that's the downside of ganking. If you do it so much and you haven't really sequenced properly like the Kane has not, the CS lead begins to build heavily for the enemy jungler, and if they are able to get a few ganks off themselves, they will have that advantage. So it's imperative in this situation that you understand when to react and gank, when to get those objectives, because you cannot afford to get three CS, four CS a minute, right? We're still keeping that around five to six, Maybe six and a half is probably a better point. You're just not trying to match a seven, eight, nine CS per minute Karthus gamer. And this is a great example of those games when while you might want to fall back to your camps a bit more, if the game dictates you reactively path like he does to this bottom lane situation, then you do so. Obviously the Ross form here is absolutely supreme. We can push that lane out once it goes in our favor and then fall back to the dragon. Here's a little bit of a quiz question. We see the Zed on the top side. You have all the spells and everything available to you. What would you do in this situation after the dragon? Pick a direction, any direction. Now, a lot of you, I'm assuming, are saying, well, Zed's top side, which means his camps are up on the bottom side, so I can counter jungle those, and because he's been farming better than me, those will be high level, so it's a great way to slingshot my experience. For more on that, see last week's video as well. Well, in theory, yeah, but you did the drag in there. Enemy bot lane has shown bottom side, which means if it's warded, you'll get collapsed on and killed. At the same time, your fearless is resetting to spend all those cash monies you just gave him, and Zed will be splitting top side, taking your camps, assuming you are doing the same to him. So this is one of those situations where if you have the numbers advantage and the vision, it's great to collapse. One of the biggest improvements of the general player base in the last few years is the ability to actually use the minimap to rotate, defend, and invade, 
and I've coached hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people at this point, but this will happen more often than not because most people just want to fight, they don't want to farm. And now because you have the numbers advantage and the angle advantage and a pushing lane, go to the Cassiopeia. And now you think, well, you know, I've been ganking a lot, every lane is ahead, and then you realize every lane is indeed not fed, and you are the big gorilla and everyone else is the monkey, so let's lead the monkeys to victory. Head to the bottom lane directly, clean up the bottom lane once more. All of a sudden, and you can look at the game match history link in the description below, you can look at the damage and the gold amounts for the Kane and the Zed at this moment, even though you're down 40 CS, because we are 814 and he is 115, you have a substantial gold lead while maintaining experience parity. Now the only heads up play I wish he would have done differently was that mid lane one where he got collapsed some, we should have anticipated it, just pulled out, taking the gold, that's great. The second situation I wish we could not have done was this one, he does Krugs in red obviously because it's not objectives, it's absolutely vital if you want to keep your gold and CS amount up and at least remain even with the Zed that you do fall back to your cams and instead of taking his one kill and falling back he goes for a little dive and yes he gets the kill but he dies. I understand the desire to do so but you know Nocturne's on the map, everyone else is looking around, your bottom lane is losing, we don't want to give them any sort of window back into the game when they should be thinking hey we're losing to a Ross. Nonetheless, that was a great moment to sequence your camps fully and then reset and then carry on fighting over those objectives. Remember, we're not ignoring our camps totally, we're just falling back to them in down moments. And this game has been an extreme example of not only proactive ganking, but reactive ganking. And both of those are ganking. And I'm saying that because I know there's some kind of delusional Joe in the comments that's going to say that he can never reactively gank because his laners are never low. I mean, who's buying that? Come on, Joe, use the map, click around F keys, you will find them. Now, I will offer some corrections and things you need to note about this game in terms of giving context that you should focus on in the same scenario. But one thing he's going to do as he takes this early game into the mid game is that while you might lose out on the experience lead to the enemy jungler, whose CS lead will go to 50 and 60 as he keeps farming and counter jungling, as long as you abuse your gold lead, which is absolutely substantial, as long as you abuse your objective control, which is absolutely exquisite, you will get the catch up experience on the monsters if you are truly that far behind, which you won't be anyway and I'm talking about the epic monsters like heralds and dragons and barons but please do not fall back and feel the need oh, I haven't found my camps in a while I need to find them the cane missed two windows particularly because of his own deaths to finish off the blue side in the first death and to finish off the blue side again in the second death so in theory if he didn't int those moments and sort of dialed it back a little bit he'd be the same level as the Zed but as you're seeing now because the Zed is still getting camps and has a huge CS lead he is ahead but the cane can kill top lane the cane can take herald the cane can move to the mid lane, the cane can win another fight and then take the dragon. You are hopefully using all of your senses, maybe not taste, don't lick your screen, but definitely your sixth sense to see that you need to push the map forward even in these moments. If you play the game properly, there will always be time to fall back to your camps, but in these moments, in the mid game moments when objectives are available, don't give a jungler who's predominantly focused on sequencing and farming any sort of window to objective control. You need to maintain the fact that you can push the map whenever you want. You can win the fights whenever you want because you have that lead. That's why Genki junglers are so important in terms of closing games out. Now, in terms of closing these kinds of games out, all of the gameplay channel deals with this extremely well in Season 12. I've already put up multiple champions, multiple videos, but let's talk briefly about the pros of a farming style jungling game as you watch the cane, you know, close the game out just through raw demoralization and destruction. Now, if you're farming jungler, but not really a Zed, let's go with your fiddlesticks, your Karthuses, maybe even a Graves. You just want to map control, objective control, and sequence very well. You can do that, but please do not fall into this trap of ignoring the lanes and not reactively ganking. If you can track the enemy ganking jungler and get to those situations, you very easily can use your experience advantage to win over those fights. That's where the Zed made mistakes. He didn't track properly, he didn't react properly, and he really never had any sort of jungle control. What you're banking on is that the ganking junglers are going to make mistakes. They're not going to get fed from the ganks and things don't go well. That's the downside of this ganking style. But most farming junglers and most of your elos, read 99% of you, won't really punish your bad ganks. They won't really punish you to the degree you would see in high elo. So as long as you are adhering to great ganking etiquette and you are tracking vision control, you are tracking the enemy jungler, you are using your F keys to keep the map active, you should have no issue using ganking to actually get ahead, reward yourself with camps, sequence properly in the downtime, and you can match any farming jungler. As a farming jungler, if you do have an experienced lead or a level spike lead, for example, level six to level five, make sure you are using that proactively to shut down the ganking jungler. Way too many times I see farming junglers actually have a lead, but not recognize it. If the ganking jungler has died or made mistakes and isn't farming camps enough, counter jungle them, set traps and invade them with your experience lead, try and sneak away objectives while they're doing something else. The Zed did none of those things and that's why it didn't work. I do believe if you do that style in season 12, you are basically coin flipping your lanes a bit more, obviously, because if you don't impact them, they don't get a lead. And if the enemy jungler does, the enemy laners get a lead. 
So a good sort of practice is to make sure we are always punishing a ganking jungler. If we get ahead, we're removing him from the game. Now you can gank your lanes to get ahead and take control, but hopefully from this video you can see that ganking while falling back to your cams a little bit more than the cane has done. Granted, this was a bit of an extreme example, is the best way to play in Season 12. Remember, taking those camps and falling back to them is important for setting up your high experience camps as a ganking jungler, so don't not forget about them, it's not Season 9. But hopefully you enjoyed and learned something, please do like, share and comment if you did. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy all the content and want more, and as always I will see you all in the next tutorial.